Not so breaking news, dinosaur embryo has been found. This is a quick video of what it would look like if it wasn't all fossilized -y type stuff. And here is the actual fossilized. Now this was found a while back, I think 2015 or something like that. But what's more interesting is the way that they say that it, it appears to be 72 to 66 million years old. And they only tell us that because it appears they have no idea when the dates were. Now, if you're interested in finding out whether or not dinosaurs lived right up until humans were around, I have done my own documentary, which is 23 minutes long, on my Patreon page called Dinosaurs Lived With Humans. And I go through various different factors that some people may not even think of, and which is why I get some amazing comments. Uh, so, yeah, feel free to watch that, and then you can decide whether or not this was really that old. Roswell Rock Stone I felt I should talk about the so-called Roswell Stone in this chapter, as the subject crosses over two different chapters. Little Green Men and Crop Circles Robert Ridge found a stone that had strange markings on it while he was out deer hunting in 2004 in Roswell, New Mexico, about 11 miles away from the famous UFO crash in 1947. The stone is about the size of a regular computer mouse. The stone has an embossed design on one side of it. To create such a design, the surrounding stone would have had to have been worn down in some way to leave the raised image. This is harder to achieve than drilling into the stone to create an inward design. There is another facet to the stone that Mr. Ridge found. It's magnetic. A few tests have been done on the stone since and they conclude the stone is one solid piece and that the design is not stuck on. There is no magnet inside the stone, and only the raised design seems to be magnetized. Interestingly, in 1996, eight years before the stone was found, a crop circle was seen in Chiseldon in Wiltshire, England by a pilot and a passenger. They claimed they flew over the field and there was no crop circle, and half an hour later they flew back over that field and there was a crop circle. The crop circle was classed as a genuine one, and not one created by humans. The pattern of the crop circle is the same as the Roswell stone. Skeptics of the Roswell stone say that it is either some elaborate hoax or some kind of anomaly that has somehow managed to beat the million to one odds of becoming sensitized to magnetism only on the raised design. The best way to create a stone design like this would be to sandblast using a stencil design. This was tested with the same image, but the results showed the new fake stone to be poorly made, compared with the sharp edges on the real design. Testing of this hypothesis produced an example of lesser quality than that of the Roswell stone. The Roswell stone was also tested to see if it was sandblasted. It was not. If it was fake, why leave it out in the middle of nowhere and hope that it would be found? It would certainly be more logical to hide it where it would almost be guaranteed to be discovered. When the stone was being tested, Mr. Ridge looked like he was going to cry when they started to cut the stone. He had become so attached to it, and if he had faked it, the last thing I think he would be doing is getting close to tears. I don't believe Mr. Ridge faked the stone. If he did, then he has the power to create magnetic fields out of certain parts of stones. The image is very slightly out at the point where the moon points almost meet, and because of this, skeptics claim it's a fake. However, no one has ever said they have to match. It's a diagram, drawing, or symbol. If you were to create a stone like this with something really simple like the McDonald's logo, the golden arches, for the purpose of showing someone it in order for them to know it's a McDonald logo, first you would look at it and try to recreate that in a stone that is slightly convex. Your version might not be 100% accurate because of the bend in the stone. If the stone was flat, you would have a far better chance. But even with the stone slightly bending, you would be able to show that to someone and they would be able to see that it's a McDonald's logo. Since Mr. Ridge found the stone in 2004, there have been other stones that were man-made showing up. But there's a report online from someone called John, who appears to claim he bought a few Roswell stones from a company he called Emlenium Productions, circa 1998. The company sold crop circle stones at the Alien Encounter 98. The company apparently made them. John, no last name given, shows a picture of a stone with the same design, however. The stone's image is not raised, but cut into, been painted, and has no magnetic properties. Also, John claims he had bought a few of these stones, but didn't want to show the pictures of the ones he claims are raised in the design. As far as I can tell, John is the only person to have known about this Millennium Productions, and I can't find any record of them.
if they are a real company and did have the skills to produce the same quality as Mr. Ridge's stone, then why hasn't anyone from that company come forward? Why has only one person called John shown a stone he bought? I'll let you work out if you feel John is someone that gives misinformation or if he's telling the truth. It's certainly a great story and would explain why a stone like that was in that location. Let's just look at Mr. Ridge's stone for a moment and assume it's real. That is not man-made. If it has something to do with the same Zeta Greys that crashed in 1947, then why would they have a stone? The Greys are past the material needs, the things us humans crave so much. They wouldn't need to create a fancy packaged item, they just simply require a practical device. The Greys would logically use magnetics to relay information, then place the object on or near a device which reads it, so much faster than plugging something in, and it doesn't require batteries and will last thousands of years if not longer. Attaching your information this way to a rock or stone which won't degrade like metal or plastic is the best way to store information. We used to use magnetic tape to record music and films, but over time the tape, plastic film, would degrade, and thus our technology changed to CD discs, which is a shame as the magnetic information would have stayed there if the tape was made of something like stone. Many ancient stone sites around the world have information stored in them using this method, but researchers may be unaware of this and don't have the equipment to decode the magnetic information. For example, there are ancient huge stone carvings of what appears to be... Not so breaking news, dinosaur embryo has been found. This is a quick video of what it would look like if it wasn't all fossilized -y type stuff. And here is the actual fossilized. Now this was found a while back, I think 2015 or something like that. But what's more interesting is the way that they say that it it appears to be 72 to 66 million years old and they only tell us that because it appears they have no idea when the dates were now if you're interested in finding out whether or not dinosaurs lived right up until humans were around i have done my own documentary which is 23 minutes long on my patreon page called dinosaurs lived with humans and I go through various different factors that some people may not even think of, and which is why I get some amazing comments. Uh, so yeah, feel free to watch that, and then you can decide whether or not this was really that old. Breaking news, scientists have found a new microorganism called the Asgard, and I won't even try and pronounce that next bit, which apparently is what helps give the complex life to animals and creatures etc and this lovely lady here uh, is one of the scientists that found out that however she works for a place called Lund University and as you can see the Rockefellers were involved in that and then if you actually look here you'll see that back in 1932 the Rockefellers got themselves really entangled in museums and research like this which is interesting because obviously we have two fused chromosomes and they're not going to tell anyone, they're not going to allow anyone to know that those fused chromosomes were done by a race of aliens that came here 450,000 years ago called the Anunnaki. And if you don't believe me, why have we got fused chromosomes? Keep watching for part two as I show more evidence of Anunnaki manipulation. Breaking news, following on from part one, the fused chromosomes that we have, none of our hominids ancestors ever had them now apparently pigs do have fused chromosomes but if you've watched my previous videos or done any research you'll find out that the pigs were domestically bred back 10,000 years ago guess where in mesopotamia guess where the anunnaki were yes you guessed it mesopotamia but apparently horses also have fused chromosomes which is interesting because when you watch my uh, documentary on mermaids I actually show evidence that horses were manipulated as well. Uh, my Patreon page got loads of videos on there. Um, so, yeah, basically it shows that the Anunnaki did genetically modify various creatures and we've got the evidence to prove it. I think it's amazing that the Bible has told us about the aliens in heaven uh, helping with the wine. Yes, here is a part in Revelation. Then another angel, we know they're messengers, came out of the temple in heaven, so we obviously know it's a spaceship in, in space, heaven is space, and he too had a sharp sickle. Another angel messenger who was in charge of the fire came from the altar and called in a loud voice to the angel who had the sharp sickle. It goes on 
to say talking about helping them with wine and wine presses. Now there's actually 22 mentions of wine in the book of Revelation. However, when you actually try and read what people, religious people seem to believe it means, they start coming out of all sorts of weird stuff. Uh, not necessarily to do with wine, even though obviously we are, we know that they brought barley here, etc., from the Sumerian tablets. Uh, and it talks here about Babylon being destroyed, which we know was Marduk. Bold claims from our true history, which is me. I'm saying that these are the subjects I'll be covering soon on my Patreon page with answers and evidence. Now, it's a very bold claim to say some of these things, because obviously none of these have got answers to. But I've been researching, and I've been pretty pretty good so far and when you're going to say well hang on a minute how can you be pretty good so far well i've already covered things like the book of enoch matching it with stonehenge i've done atlantis i've done what the granite boxes are for in the pyramids i've done so many different things that no one else has actually even come close to saying so when i say that i'm going to be able to give you certain information on my patreon page it might be worth you watching and i've already done a video called uh, book of revelation which i'm going to do part two soon about satan and what satan was not who and there's so many more videos there's 106 videos three hour documentaries and all sorts of things and these are well edited so feel free to proof god was an alien anarchy now i've done some videos on my tiktok page so here's part three for example and they're 10 minutes each and this one's got 17,000 views the reason why i'm pointing these out is because not one person has told me i'm wrong with evidence now i do get people on my live chat saying source trust me bro but these videos actually have all the sources and no one's complained and no one said i'm wrong so i thought you could go and watch them on there if you want to watch on youtube uh look for the one on our true history down and find this one here the lost book of our true history it's called uh and if that's just 40 minutes or 30 34 here 40 on 10 minutes each on tiktok but if you want to watch hours worth of this evidence uh it's here on my patreon page so have a watch on there but the point is stop telling me source bro when you can't this Harvard professor either listens to my live chats or is actually as smart as me. And I say that because he has said that he now thinks that aliens could be creating universes, including our own, using something like the Hadron Collider. And I've been saying it for years. In fact, you can actually go and listen to my live chats on outruhistory.co.uk or on YouTube under Our True History. So you can actually listen to me saying it years ago. So what I say is it covered the three main criteria for the universe for a Big Bang. And this is using my extensive years of research. So first is who created the, the Big Bang? You know, have we got a God? Yes, it would be aliens. Two, what created it? It would have been particles just like they would use in the Hadron Collider. And three, would it be expanding? Yes, it would be a sphere that's expanding. I've seen a few videos where people add various things to something. So one of them was Adam and Eve sinned and then they attributed a sound wave to it and then they attributed something else to it. And before you know it, it was way off down the line and I'm not sure I agree with them. But let's try that ourselves. So here is the original wording for when the Anunnaki needed the clay um, to create humans. So this predates the Bible, this actual here right here. So no more Bible stuff, please. Let's try this then. You should need the clay from the top of the Abzu, which is South Africa. So we've got clay and now we've got a clay person. But look, the clay person's on a tree. That's probably the tree of life. Have we got the Anunnaki with a tree of life? Yes, we have. There we are. But look at their hats. It kind of makes them look like, I don't know, magicians maybe. Ah, there's a magician. So, ah, oh, but look, the colour's red. So if we go with the colour red, then we've got lights. So maybe the lights in the sky is what helps.